the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came down with the twelve apostles and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you and revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who have full, are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> I want to begin this morning by inviting you to take a moment and to think about the rules which govern your life, the rules which you follow on a day-to-day -day basis, perhaps the rules, the ideals by which you try to live your life. If you think about it, there are an awful lot that govern much of what we do. I mean, just getting here this morning, I would hazard a guess that all of us had to at least pay a little bit of attention, although maybe we don't think about it much anymore, to the traffic rules and laws that govern moving about in this community. We have to be at least somewhat aware of what the speed limit is, pay attention to traffic signs and traffic signals knowing that if you don't pay enough attention to it, eventually uh, you will be detected and all of a sudden you will realize that indeed someone was paying attention. Scholars tell us that in the Hebrew canon of scriptures, there are in fact 613 different rules that govern the way that people are supposed to live their lives. Many of us know some of these rules. Um, most people are at least familiar with the Ten Commandments, with the rules that God sets down to govern our relationship with him and with each other. But these rules, they really run the gamut. They include things like the Ten Commandments. They include things like what to do if you accidentally kill your neighbor's cow. There are all kinds of different rules, different things contained within the scriptures. And today, in our gospel lesson, we're presented with what really is the pinnacle of things that ought to govern our lives as Christians. We're presented with Luke's account of the Beatitudes. Most of us are probably more familiar with the Beatitudes that come from St. Matthew's gospel uh, and his Sermon on the Mount. But what we, what we have today is what Luke uh, what Luke records and what he refers to as the Sermon on the Plain, where Jesus tells us that the poor will be blessed, 
those who are hungry will be blessed, those who are weeping will be taken care of, those who are reviled will again receive God's special blessing. Most of us are at least again familiar with this first part because these echo ones that are contained in Matthew's gospel. But I have to admit that every time this comes up in our lessons or every time I read it in my own study of Luke's gospel, I get a little bit nervous with the next part because this part, Luke, uh, Luke is the only one who recorded where Jesus speaks what are known as the woes, where Luke tells us that Jesus says, woe to you who are rich, woe to you who have received your fill, Woe to you who are laughing now. Woe to you whom people speak well of. I find that kind of difficult to hear because when I go through those lists of woes, I can't help but put myself in that spot. And I, oh, again, I'll confess, it makes me a little bit nervous. And so as I was studying this, as I was thinking about it, as I was pondering, what it is that the Beatitudes speak to us about how it is that we are to live, what it means for us to understand these to be the height of how we're called to be as Christians in the world. What stuck out to me in this account of Jesus' teaching is that what we're called to do as the people of God is to put our full faith, our full trust, our full dependence on him. And that is easy to do when the emergencies of life intrude, when those things that we build up around ourselves to keep the chaos of the world at bay, when those are stripped away, it's easy for us to put our full faith, our full trust in God. And what I think Jesus is speaking to us about today is that we have more work to do, those of us who have all that we need to eat, those of us who have been given enough to have shelter, those of us who have experienced joy here in this present life, we have to remember that that too is a gift, is a blessing from God, and we are still called to put our full faith, our full trust in him. That to me is the good news that is contained within this gospel lesson for all of us. And so this day, this week, I challenge us to open the eyes of our heart, to open the eyes of our mind, to open ourselves to the fullness of God's blessing, to open ourselves to that awareness of his presence, that awareness of his gift, that awareness of our dependence on him. And in so doing, receive that gift of the blessing of his kingdom. The name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.